Today we're going to look at this nice inequality, which was a problem long listed for the International Math Olympiad in 1984. And well, what is this inequality? We'll show that for all n bigger than or equal to 3, the floor of n times n plus 1 over 2 times 2 n minus 1 is equal to the floor of n plus 1 over 4. Okay, so let's just get going. So let's start with this right hand side. So I'm going to start with this floor of n plus 1 over 4. Now the floor can only make things smaller. Recall that it's an elevator down to the closest integer, which doesn't go anywhere if you're already at an integer. Okay, so this is less than or equal to n plus 1 over 4, which is in turn equal to n plus, or sorry, n over 4 plus 1 over 4. Now, this may not seem super useful, but let's perform a fairly straightforward calculation over here in the argument of the floor on the left-hand side. So let's observe that n times n plus 1 over 2 times 2n minus 1 is equal to n over 4 plus 3 over 8 plus 3 over 16n minus 8. So again, that's just doing a polynomial long division, keeping the quotient and the remainder. Now let's take this bit right here, this 3 over 8 plus 3 over 16n minus 8, and let's observe that this stuff is definitely strictly bigger than 1 over 4. That's pretty clear. 3 over 8 is bigger than 1 over 4. And then, well, this... 3 over 16n minus 8 is always positive. As long as n is bigger than or equal to 1, we don't even need that n is bigger than or equal to 3 here. Okay, so that means that we can say that this stuff that we have so far is strictly less than n over 4 plus 3 over 8 plus 3 over 16n minus 8, but we can push that back together to give us n times n plus 1 over 2 times 2n minus 1. Now we can use the fact that the floor is an increasing function, maybe weakly increasing, to uh, take the floor of both sides of this. Now taking the floor of the floor doesn't do anything, so that gives us the floor of n plus 1 over 4 over there on the left hand side. And then over there on the right hand side, that gives us the floor of n times n plus 1 all over 2 times 2n minus 1. Okay, so we haven't quite done it, but we've kind of done half the problem. We've proven that this right-hand side is what? Less than or equal to this left-hand side. Okay, so let's come back and prove the other direction of the inequality. Thanks for sticking around this long in the video. If you're enjoying the video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, consider subscribing. It really helps out. Okay, so we just proved that the left-hand side of this equation is bigger than or equal to the right-hand side of the equation. And now we'll prove that the left-hand side of the equation is less than or equal to the right-hand side of the equation. And then that'll finish everything off. So I'd like to recall that we had this polynomial long division result that we used before. But as we pointed out before, we did not use the fact that n had to be bigger than or equal to 3. So let's see what we get out of that over here. So n bigger than or equal to 3 tells us that 16n minus 8 is bigger than or equal to 40. But that tells us that 3 over 16n minus 8 is less than or equal to 3 over 40. So just from standard calculations with inequalities. All right, so let's see what that leaves us with. So I'm going to take this and say that it's less than or equal to n over 4 plus 3 over 8 plus 3 over 40. Again, using the inequality that we have just established. Now I want to start making this right-hand side look a little bit more like this right-hand side right here, this n plus 1 over 4. So I can observe that this is equal to n plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 plus 3 over 40. Okay, I think that's pretty clear how that calculation went. And now I can take this 1 over 8 and I can replace it with 5 over 40, just by giving myself a common denominator with the 3 over 40. 
But now I can put those two things together and I have n plus one over four plus, well, eight over 40, which is the same thing as one over five. But now let's look at the inequality that we've just produced. We've got this n times n plus one over two times two n minus one is less than or equal to n plus one over four plus one over five. So I can take the floor of both sides and I have the floor of n times n plus one over two times two n minus one is less than or equal to the floor of n plus one over four plus one over five. But now here's where really we use the fact that n is bigger than or equal to three to get to this point right here. And I think it's important, I think this was constructed to give us this one fifth right here. Because if you take something and divide it by four, and then you add one fifth, you don't change what the floor is. Because let's think about it. If we take n plus one over four, the biggest denominator could be three, or sorry, the biggest remainder could be three. So that means that we could take this number right here and write it as a whole number. I'll just put box for whole number plus three over four. And that's like at worst. It might be two over four or a half or one over four. The important thing is if we write it as a whole number plus three over four and we add one fifth, since one fifth is less than one quarter, we don't get to the next whole number. So that argument that I've just said tells us that since we don't get to the next whole number, this has to be equal to the floor of n plus one over four. But now we can go back over here and observe that we can complete this uh, problem by saying that the floor of n times n plus one over two times two n minus one is also less than or equal to the floor of n plus one over four. But if two numbers satisfy this condition that they're both bigger than or equal to each other in a certain order and less than or equal to each other in the same order, then that means that well, they have to be equal. And that's exactly what we've ended up with.